The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Before we get into the next series, I wanted to take the time to encourage Israelites everywhere, especially at the times we are living in. A new era is upon us and Israelites need to know how to interact with the Most High to stay ahead of the kingdom of darkness. You will be making a lot of important decisions. Some of these decisions you cannot make independently from the Most High. At such a time as this, it is important to know the direction the Most High is taking you and your family. Playing church and submitting to religion must stop. Put away demonic doctrines of devils and open yourself up to receive spiritual food that will nourish your spirit. The scriptures say we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Most High. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Israelites, if you cannot hear the words of the Most High, this is a good indicator that your spirit is malnourished. Eating nutritional food maintains your fleshly body, but it does not help your spirit. Remember, the Most High operates in the spirit. Israelites, when you sleep and exercise, that is sustaining your fleshly body. Eating, exercising, and sleeping does nothing for your spirit. That is why the scripture said man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Most High. The words of the Most High nourishes your spirit. In addition, praying and fasting nourish your spirit. Your spirit is the real you. The reflection you see in the mirror of yourself is not the real you. Your body houses your spirit. If your spirit is malnourished, then your life expectancy in the physical realm will be shortened. Any injuries your spirit obtain will reflect in the physical realm. The kingdom of darkness does most of the attacks in the spirit realm while you sleep. Many people are ignorant to the affairs of the spirit realm. They become vulnerable when they sleep. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. The workers of iniquity attack you in the spirit because they know what takes place in the spirit would manifest in the physical realm. Many sheep do not have the knowledge to comprehend when the kingdom of darkness attack in the spirit. The scripture said, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the spirit. The scriptures went on to say, you should fear the one who can kill the body and the spirit. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Only the most high can destroy spirit. Once your spirit is dead, you no longer exist. If an accidental death occurs or the workers of iniquity conspire against you and kill your body in the physical realm, your spirit continues to live. For example, late President John Magafuli may no longer be here with us in the physical. His spirit lives on. The workers of iniquity cannot kill his spirit. Paul said in the scriptures, I gain regardless if I live or die. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Depending on how a person lived their life would determine their eternity. The reason you should not fear those who kill the body and not the spirit, the body is not the real you. The scripture said when a person dies, their spirit returned to the Most High, while the body returned to dust. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. 
the beast system has many people prioritizing the fleshly body and neglecting the spirit. You must take care of your spirit. It is important. Your fleshly body is a temporary suit that you wear to live in the physical realm. All spirits need flesh to live in the physical realm. That is the most highest law. The angels take on the likeness of men when they are here to assist the people of the most high. Remember, the scripture said, be mindful on how you treat strangers because you may entertain angels unawares. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. The watchers took wives from the daughters of men and sent against the animals to obtain flesh for their offsprings to be seen in the physical realm. Part beasts and part human living creatures come from the transgression of the fallen angels and the beasts of the field. The spirit of the giants roam the earth until this day. The book of Enoch revealed because they are born of flesh, they remain here as unclean spirits. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling. For Yahshua to obtain a fleshly body, he had to be born through a woman. Every baby that is born must go through the process of gaining a fleshly suit in their mother's womb before entering the physical realm. A baby that is born without a spirit is dead. Death occur when your spirit separates from the body. Whereas the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Unclean spirits cannot be seen because they are disembodied spirits. Unclean spirits attach themselves to humans. Unclean spirits influence the person they made their house to do their will. The book of Matthew in the Bible reveal what happens to an unclean spirit that has been cast out of a person. The unclean spirit walks through dry places seeking rest. If the unclean spirit cannot find a new home, it returns to the person it was cast out of. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. The man in the tombs had legions of unclean spirits operating in him. When Yahshua cast the unclean spirits out of the man, they went into the herd of swine. The man in the tomb is a good example that prove a person who appeared to be human may not be human. You should ask yourself what spirit is occupying that individual's body. The man in the tomb had no control over his body because unclean spirits has taken over him. The unclean spirits had him roaming the tombs and cutting himself. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. How many people have you seen in your everyday life behaving like the man in the tomb and society dismiss their conditions? Many people would convince themselves the individual suffer from mental illness. The scriptures reveal these people are occupied with unclean spirits. It is time to view what is happening around you in the perception of the Most High. The scriptures reveal unclean spirits exist and they can possess a person. When we see evidence of unclean spirits taking over a person, many people view the victim's condition in the perspective of the flesh and label their condition as a disability. I believe the reason so many refuse to believe the supernatural, they were trained in the beast system to view the supernatural as fictional tales. The beast system has closed many people's spiritual eyes. That is why many perceive an individual who is occupied with unclean spirits as crazy instead of diagnosing the true condition. The scriptures did not identify the man in the tomb. His legacy consists of the number of unclean spirits living in his earthly body. The scriptures reveal more about the unclean spirits living in him than the man. That is because the man's body was occupied until deliverance that individual is under the control of unclean spirits in the kingdom of darkness. Israelites, it is important to nourish your spirit. Your spirit is the real you. Do not neglect your spirit while you are taking care of your earthly body. When you know how to differentiate spirit from flesh, you will gain a better understanding of the Most High. 
to upkeep your body with the proper nutrition, you must eat food that gives your body the nutrients that it needs to operate. A strict regimen of exercising and proper eating would upkeep your fleshly body. Proper eating and exercising does not nourish your spirit. You must know what your spirit and earthly body needs to live a balanced life. The B system is not going to give you the knowledge you need to live a balanced life. Yeshua said to the Samaritan woman, if you drink from this water, you will thirst again. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Your earthly body requires you to eat every single day. If you do not eat to feed your body, you will become malnourished and sick. If you rely on the beast system for provision, you will always hunger and thirst. The beast system does not have the nutrients you need to nourish your spirit. The beast system feeds your flesh. The scripture said you cannot please the most high in the flesh. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Like your earthly body, your spirit will become malnourished if you do not feed your spirit. To get the proper nourishment for your spirit, you must have a relationship with the Most High. Through your relationship with the Most High, Yah will do the good work in you to nourish your spirit. Having a healthy relationship with the Most High would elevate you from glory to glory. How do one interact with the Most High to nourish his or her spirit? Israelites, you must engage in activities that would bring the presence of the Most High into your life. You cannot live a life of sin and expect to have a blessed life. The scripture said, sin separates you from the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Repentance is first. After repentance, you must get familiar with the words of the Most High. This is extremely important, Israelites. The words of the Most High are powerful. It is sharper than any sword the fallen angel Azazel taught mankind to make. The words of the Most High activate the angels, Yah's military, the promises Yah made to his people, protection, and more. The scripture said the Most High's words would not return to him void, but it will do what he sent them to do. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Obeying the laws of the Most High and knowing His words bring the presence of the Most High into your life. Every time our ancestors obeyed the Most High, they live a prosperous life. In addition, the Most High protect and provide for His people. I cannot stress how important it is to know the words of the Most High. Once you know the words of the Most High, you must remind Yah of His words in prayer. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. To interact with the Most High, you must communicate with the Most High. Praying is communicating with the Most High. The scriptures instruct us to pray all kinds of prayers. To get the Most High to move, you must remind him of his words. Tell him what he said he would do for you. Once you remind him of his words, his words will not return to him void. It will do what he sent it to do, just as the scriptures state. An Israelite who do not know the words cannot remind the Most High of his words. Therefore, the enemy can come to steal, kill, and destroy. You would fall prey to the enemy because you do not know how to fight back. Take the time to learn the scriptures with the Holy Spirit as your guide. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth of the Most High's words in the scriptures. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Fasting is another way to interact with the Most High. Fasting breaks down strongholds. Fasting brings forth spiritual warfare. Fasting is serious, Israelites. I do not recommend anyone to engage in fasting if you're not prepared for what is to come from the result of fasting. The devils you provoke will come back with full force to occupy their house. 
Unclean spirits refer to you as their house. Fasting brings forth deliverance. You must be prepared to maintain your deliverance. If you're not prepared, the devil will come back with other devils stronger than it and place a stronghold on your life and your condition would be worse than what it was before. The scriptures confirm. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. You must be ready to deal with the everyday trials and tribulations you would face from the result of fasting. If you could incorporate praying, fasting, studying the words of the Most High, and building a relationship with the Most High into your everyday life, your spirit would never be malnourished. Yahshua said to the Samaritan woman at the well, The water I give you to drink is a living water that would quench your thirst, and you would never thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Only the Most High can provide our spirit with the nourishments that we need to live a balanced life. Do not seek the beast system to quench your thirst. Incorporating repentance, fasting, praying, and studying the words of the Most High, your spiritual eyes would open and you will be able to see the Most High. The more you interact with the Most High, the more you would recognize Him in your everyday life. Some Israelites struggle in hearing from the Most High. The more you interact with the Most High, the easier it becomes to discern His voice. Once you recognize His voice, following His instructions are easier. The scripture said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Most High. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He delighteth in His way. Discerning the voice of the Most High in the times we are living now is important. We all must make important decisions every single day. All of us are being tested with the vaccine. We all must make the decision whether we will take the vaccine. Some people were put in the position to take the vaccine or lose their job. Others cannot travel unless they take the vaccine. The workers of iniquity are trying to scare the people who have not taken the vaccine of a new deadly variant that mysteriously appeared and is coming to America. I am sure fear-mongering will influence many to take the job. The beast system has removed some restrictions for the people who are vaccinated. The workers of iniquity do this to encourage many to take the vaccine. What are you going to do, Israelites and strangers? There is a reason behind every test. Sometimes the Most High allow us to lose our jobs to show us His glory. I am living proof of that. I have shared on many occasions on how I was fired a few years ago when my own people conspired against me. I had bills to pay and my income was the only income for my household. I was put in a hard position. I had no choice but to trust the Most High. Little did I know the Most High made plans to provide for me long before losing my job. The events that are taking place in this generation are not a surprise to the Most High. Yah foretold the end from the beginning. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Nothing catch the Most High by surprise. If you align yourself with the Most High and get familiar with the many promises He made to His people, the Most High will provide. You must interact with the Most High to gain access to His promises. I encourage you to pass the test. Remember, if you fail, you will have to take the test again. The Most High tests us to show us what is truly in our hearts. If you cannot trust that the Most High can provide when the beast system is threatening your life and pressuring you to go against the will of the Most High, what are you going to do when bigger problems arise? Interacting with the Most High requires faith and complete trust. Israelites, it is important to trust the Most High with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, 
and he shall direct thy paths. In this new era the kingdom of darkness is ushering, we must have great faith in the Most High. When the odds are against us, believe that the Most High will help his people, just as the Most High reassured his people throughout their generations when trouble came. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Sometimes the direction the Most High takes you and your family is not going to make sense. The reason it does not make sense, we tend to view what is happening around us in the flesh. A carnal mind cannot understand spirit. The more we view the world in the flesh, the harder it will be to see the Most High. The Most High does not solve our troubles with the beast system strategies and solutions. Yah does not operate like the world operate. If you are not in the spirit, everything the Most High does will not make sense. The Most High seek for his people to worship and serve him in the spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Israelites, it is important to understand the spirit and flesh. When the Most High responds to you, he responds to your spirit. Do not try to find the Most High in the flesh. The Most High does nothing according to the flesh. The flesh is Satan's territory. To go deeper with the Most High, you must interact with him daily. Religion was a stumbling block many of us had to endure to motivate us to dig deeper. It is when we seek the Most High with all of our heart, we found him, just as the scripture said. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Israelites, to get to know the Most High, you must have a relationship. You must interact with the Most High to build the relationship. The Most High want His people to seek His face. Do not look to the beast system to find the Most High. The beast system wants to cause a separation between you and the Most High. Israelites, the Most High is not this mysterious entity that made it hard for His people to interact with Him. He is closer than you think and very involved in his people's everyday life. It is up to you to recognize him. I encourage you to seek the face of the Most High to find success in your spiritual journey. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another.